Okay, so we're gonna check a few, or all these primitive reflexes, and I'm gonna show you different movement strategies for them that you're gonna do um, in conjunction with sensory-based modalities that I'm gonna teach you in a, in a future video, but during all these exercises, because like for example, we're gonna find these reflexes, there's different exercises that are associated with getting rid of them, but if you just solely do the exercise alone, it takes forever. But as we start adding in sensory integration stuff that I'm gonna teach you, uh, the reflexes go away very quickly, like, I mean, extremely quickly. And some, and some kids will go away in a few minutes. So what we're going to do is there's going to be three different um, reflexes. I'm going to show you standing, three on your hands and knees, and then three um, that I'll have you do just laying down or sitting, seated. So the first one I'm going to have you do um, is checking for what's called the, the tonic labyrinthine reflex. You're going to have them stand, put their feet together so they're touching. You're going to have them close their eyes, and you're going to tip their head back. Um, what you're looking for is they should stay steady. Their head should just come back like this. If you see everything start to hyperextend and they start losing their balance, um, that's going to be a positive. And as you bring their head down, if everything, they should just be able to bring their head down, stay balanced. If everything collapses forward and they start losing their balance, that's a positive. You're going to do that movement three times. And you're really going to look at the third time. So as you bring them back, they sit here and they start getting these big movements, that's a positive for a tonic labyrinthine reflex. Next one you're gonna do is, um, depends on the age of the kid, if it's a small kid, I'll just do it standing. Um, it's called a moral reflex. Should go away right around three to four months of life. And what I have them do for that is, so I'll have you do the tonic labyrinthine, and at the end of that, I'll have them tip their head back, and then I'll just take them by the shoulders, I'll be behind them, and I'll pull them back quickly. So you wanna, I mean, a pretty good, quick pull and what you'll see with that is if it's positive their arms will go from here they'll come up like that um, if it's positive if it, what should happen though if the reflex is integrated is their hands should go back to catch themselves so if they don't go back to catch themselves it means they have an earlier reflex present that's stopping that reflex from coming out that's the moral reflex another way I often test it is um, I'll have them open their eyes and look straight ahead and I'll tip, have them tip their head back, like as the, the doctor, I'll tip their head back quickly like this. And what you'll see is if it's positive, they'll take a big breath in and their shoulders may even come up like that. That's a positive as well. There's two different portions of the moral reflex. There's the vestibular or the movement aspect, and then there's the auditory aspect. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go right behind them and I'll clap really loud. And what you'll see is if they have it, they'll, I mean, they'll literally they'll startle like that, their shoulders will come up. Or another thing you might see that's still positive is, let's say you clap, 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 clap. What you'll see is at first, their eyes blink, blink, blink. They should do about two to four of those. But if you keep clapping and their eyes keep blinking, 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 and it keeps going and going and going, that's also a sign of a positive, meaning they're startling, 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 when their brain should be able to shut that down. Um, the other one you're going to test standing is what's called a standing asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. So for that, you can put their arms straight out in front of them, relax their elbows like this. Again, my feet are still together. I close my eyes. And then what you do is you go behind them and you turn their head. What should happen is they should be able to turn their head without their body moving. If you turn their head and their whole body starts turning with it, that's a positive. Turn their head this way, whole body starts turning with it, that's a positive. You want to do this three times each side because if it's a true reflex, these things will get worse as you do them, not better. So you turn this way, their body turns, turn this way, their body turns, then you turn back this way and it turns even farther and then back and forth and it gets worse and worse as a true reflex. Um, but any movement is a positive. Secondly, the next way to test that asymmetrical tonic neck reflex is on your hands and knees. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them on their hands and knees like this. You're gonna drop their low back down. You wanna make sure that their low back is actually dropped because you can compensate for this reflex by rounding your low back like this. It's really hard to test. The other thing you wanna watch out for is when their arms, if they have uh, like hypermobile joints or they have lack of muscle tone, a lot of times they can hyperextend their elbow and they'll lock their elbows out. So you wanna always make sure that their elbows aren't rotated like this, that they're facing out this way and maybe even having just a tiny bit of a bend to it so you don't lock those elbows out but then you'll have them drop their low back and what you do is you turn their head to one side so i physically come in in front of them and i turn their head 
when you turn their head, what you'll see if this is positive is we'll turn their head and you're not, you're not forcing it, you're not turning hard, but as you turn their head, what you'll see is, and you kind of do it quickly, so it's not like a slow, like, oh, it's kind of a quick movement. You turn their head, and what you'll see is the arm on the opposite side will drop out, and you come back, and it'll extend, and it'll drop out as you turn their head, same thing the opposite direction. You turn the head the other way, their arm will drop out on the opposite side when it's present. Again, do it three times. The first time you may not see anything. The second time it may get worse and then it gets worse. Um, then the next one is the symmetrical tonic neck reflex. Put them on their hands and knees, drop their low back, and you're gonna bring, you're physically gonna bring their head down. And again, you're kinda, kinda do it a little bit quick. You're gonna bring their head down, Boom, and what you'll see is as their head goes down, their arms will wanna drop out with it. I mean, some kids, you'll bring their head down and they physically like drop to the ground. And it's, when it's a reflex, they really can't stop it. Um, another thing you might see is, another positive is even if their arms don't drop out, but as you bring their head down, their whole body translates forward and their, their uh, feet come up. And then as you bring their head up, their, their bottom translates back that's also a positive sign of this reflex. So watch out for that as you bring their head up and down. Um, and then the last one you're gonna do is while they're still on their hands and knees, you're gonna bring their shirt up. And what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show it, I can't do it like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna check for a spinal gallant reflex. So what I do is this is their spine. You're gonna stroke along their spine and what you're looking for is any movement towards that side. So as I stroke here, you might get a quick movement towards that side. And I start closest to midline and I work my way out. Cause you may see something here, you may not. And as you work your way out and you stroke here, you may start getting a response out here. So anywhere where you see that response is where you're stimulating. Um, and then same on the opposite side. And then I'll typically have them lay down for the rest of them. Um, the, uh, I'm just gonna show them to you seated though. But what I'm looking for is, these ones are sensory reflexes. So I'm gonna go on the bottom of their foot. Uh, let's say this is my right foot, this is the inside, this is the outside, and this is the bottom facing you guys. I'm gonna stroke up the outside of their foot right on the lateral edge. And if it's, this is called the Babinski reflex. If it's positive, you'll see their toes splay out and come up. Toes will splay out and come up. If they just simply retract their leg, that's not positive you'll physically see their toes splay up. Um, that's a positive for a Babinski, it should go away right around a year. And then what I'll do is I'll come and look at their hands. We're looking for a palmar grasp reflex and I'll stroke the palm of their hand. And if I see that reflexive movement of their hand every time I stroke like that, that's a positive. In my case, you should see nothing, but that reflexive movement like that is positive. And I'll stroke here, I might stroke here, I might stroke here, and I test different angles as well, both sides. And then lastly, the last reflex you're gonna check is the rooting reflex. So I'll stroke with either a Q-tip, a paintbrush, sometimes my finger, sometimes a pen, whatever I kinda have. Um, I'll stroke along the, from basically the ear to the corner of your mouth. What you're looking for is when you see that reflex is present, when you get to the corner of their mouth, you might see a reflexive pursing of their lips. You may see a reflexive movement towards that side. Um, so I'll stroke here, I might check like here, here, kind of all around and see is there anywhere where they respond to that. In kids it's bad enough, you'll literally see, you'll stroke their face and they'll open their mouth and turn and start to suck. Um, it can be that strong, but usually it's just a small movement that's elicited. So that's how you check all of those reflexes. Um, exercises you're gonna do. What you're gonna um, do with these exercises, you're not gonna do them in isolation of each other. Uh, you're gonna do, in future videos, you learn how to do a brain-based exam. You learn what sensory systems need stimulated in your own child. And at the same time as you do these exercises, you're gonna use those sensory stimuluses to get more activation in the brain so your brain can integrate more efficiently and shut the reflexes down. But what you're gonna do for a tonic labyrinthine reflex, if that's present, is um, there's an exercise that we have them do they lay on their back like this, arms up, they do a V up, and they roll over, and they do a Superman. And then they roll back over, they do a V up, and they roll the other direction and do a Superman. I have them do about 10 to 15 of those. Um, 
in a row while we're doing one-sided sensory stimulation. And then if they have a moral reflex, what I have them do is they, stand, they sit like this, they cross their right leg over their left leg, and of course, this is if they're actually able to do those things based off their age. Um, they cross their right leg over their left, right arm over their left, they collapse into a ball, they open up all the way, arms all the way out, legs all the way out, most importantly, head goes back past their shoulders, all the way out like this, they come back, left foot over right, left arm over right, all the way up, and they keep doing that back and forth. Um, I usually have them do 15 to 20 of those, and I have them do this like three, four times a day um, for the moral reflex. If it's a little kid that can't do that, you can help them. So you can have them sit on a bed, put a bunch of pillows behind their back, take their arms, and go woo over top of those pillows. If it's a really small kid, I'll even put them on my lap and I'll hold their head and I'll drop them back quickly. As you drop them back quickly, you'll see them startle like that or you'll see their arms come out. Um, and we're trying to elicit that reflex to activate that reflex, but at the same time using that sen increased sensory information to reintegrate that reflex. For the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, what you're gonna have them do is something called a lizard. It's really easy. You'll have them lay on their belly You'll have them turn their head to one side, side they turn their head to, you're going to bend their arm, bend their leg on like this, I'll have them hold for a half a second, a second, and then we switch. Bend my arm on the opposite, or on the same side my head turns, bend my leg, straighten everything on the opposite side, and just go back and forth. It just replicates army crawling, and what you'll see is kids that have that reflex, it's actually really hard for them to coordinate that movement and so you may even have to help them to get that movement down and then for a symmetrical tonic neck reflex what we'll do is cat cows or cat camels um, you'll have them drop their low back lift their head all the way up look as high as they can and keep their arms straight the entire time and then you'll have them round their low back drop their head all the way down look between their legs and again keep their arms straight the entire time up down up down um, and I'd have them do for both of those the lizards and that like 15 20 reps three or four times a day while you're doing specific one-sided sensory stimulation um, the other ones are actually really easy the sensory ones if you have a palmer grasp reflex a Babinski reflex or a rooting reflex you're simply gonna come in with a q-tip while you're doing one-sided sensory stimulation again and stroke 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 and their hand will move 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 but eventually what will happen is you'll fatigue out that reflex and then it'll stop moving so once it stops moving you're done with it um, sometime and same with the bottom of the feet right around their mouth same thing you're going to stimulate it until it goes away sometimes when those are really strong like technically they could take 20 minutes of stroking it to get rid of it um, so in those cases, I just say do about two or three minutes if it doesn't go away in that amount of time and you're going to do that, you know, three or four times a day as well. If it doesn't go away in that couple minutes, come back to it, you know, later in the day or the next day and just keep going over a week or two period. You'll start noticing that you maybe you stroke it two or three or six times and it goes away and then it'll start getting better and better and better. But sometimes it takes a little bit to get those ones to, to get out of there. Um, the spinal gallant reflex is the only other one. And again, you're gonna do the same thing. You have them lay on their belly and you're gonna stroke and you'll see the move, move, move. Um, that's one way you can do it. So you can physically go and stimulate those, that reflex so they activate their core and start to develop those muscles to shut down the reflex. Or the other thing you can do is you can have them like lay on carpet, take their shirt off so their back is touching the carpet and I have them do snow angels and have them do 15, 20 reps, and that helps to desensitize their back. And then the only other thing I add, so these sessions that you're gonna to do to get rid of these reflexes, however many of them they, they have, you're gonna do the exercise for it while we're doing one-sided brain stimulation. And then at the end of those, I'm gonna have you do three different core exercises. The first one is bridges. So I'll have them just put their feet shoulder width apart, hands flat, hold here, and I'll have them hold it for about a minute if they can. If they start to shake and they're doing this after like 15, 20 seconds, once they start to shake, 
have them stop and come back to it later that day. The other one we want to do is we want to do supermans. So we're going to lift, hold. The goal is to get to a minute. Um, if they start to shake or wobble after a few seconds, then what you can do is you can just have them go everything flat and they can do one arm at a time, one arm at a time, one leg at a time, one leg at a time if they're not strong enough to do all their extremities at the same time. And the last one they're gonna do is side planks. So have them stack their feet here, hold as long as they can. A lot of times kids aren't even strong enough to do that. So we have them bend their knees and we have them just go off of their knees. The goal is to get to 30 seconds each side um, and if they can't do it, work your way up to that. A lot of these kids have such weak cores that they, they can't do it. So you're gonna work your way up to it. But again, at the same time, we're doing one-sided sensory information uh, or stimulus, which is what we're gonna teach you how to assess and how to implement now. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. To learn more or to schedule an intensive or anything with my team, there's a link below. Just go ahead and click that and that'll get you to the right spot. Have an awesome day.